Welcome to the Living Artist Podcast. I'm your host, Preston M. Smith. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Living Artist Podcast. I'm Preston M. Smith at PMS Artwork Everywhere on Internet Land and Socials. I want to thank you for landing on this podcast. Whether you're a professional artist, just getting started in the art world, a collector of art, or just consider yourself a creative person, this podcast has something for you. I like to think of it as a fun way to rant and talk to other creative people about living the life of an artist, surviving and getting ahead in the art world, and enjoying your life. But most importantly, not waiting until you're dead to make it happen. All right, let's get started. Want to make a podcast? Spotify has got a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere, and even earn money, all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then, you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify as well as Q&A polls to take conversations with your fans to the next level. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. I'm personally getting a lot out of Spotify for Podcasters, and I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com forward slash podcasters to get started. Genie here from the hit musical Aladdin. Get ready for fun, y'all. We're Broadway's biggest party. Our show has got everything you're looking for in a great time. Mega laughs, incredible songs, show-stopping dancing, and just when you think you've seen it all, a magic carpet flies across the stage. The party never stops. So grab your friends and fam and come see us. For tickets, visit AladdinTheMusical.com today. And tell them your amazing, fabulous friend Genie sent you. show you something. Let's say you're walking down the street. You're right at your own business. You got your art and your arm. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you're dreaming. Welcome back to Win Impressions Attack. Oh, man. Shout out to old Jim Carrey, Fire Marshal Bill on In Living Color. Some of you might recognize that. Some of you might have gotten that before I told you that. And you know what? You get a cookie. It's coming to you in the mail. But I was just thinking about the theme of the episode today, and I was thinking about burn it all to the ground, and Fire Marshal Bill came to my mind. So hence the opening to this episode. You know, I like to do all that crazy crap. But um, what does that mean, burn it all to the ground? What am I talking about? Am I saying to set fire to your studio, get Fire Marshal Bill there to ignite the flame? No. What I'm saying is that we need to sometimes burn all of our preconceptions to the ground, which is, let's take, for example, what you think your path is supposed to be in the art world, right? Let's say you're thinking, let's say you walk it down the street. No, <laughs> let's say that you are... Uh, a person who wants to be famous. You know, you want to get your art out there and you really want it to be seen. You want to blow up. You want to be showing in these blue chip galleries. You want to have these huge collectors. You want to be doing these big marketing campaigns, you know, all that stuff. So you think, you know, well, I'm going to just follow this path that's been laid out before me for decades and centuries even of going up through the gallery system, showing my work in gallery shows and you know, getting in and hobnobbing with people and hobnobbing, I haven't used that one before, hobnobbing with all the cultural elite and the bourgeoisie and getting your work out there and getting into collector's eyes and making friends and making contacts and so on and so forth. Well, that's fine. You can do that. That's still out there. You can do that if you want to. Or you can take a match. And- <laughs> okay. So that's just too much fun to do. But I'm going to tell you, you can do that. You can take some of these old paths that have been around for a long time and follow those. And, and, you know, maybe they get you somewhere. Or you can be like me and you can take a match 
and burn it all to the ground. Uh, yeah, I didn't really do that. I mean, I came up in school. I studied theater and fine art and, you know, I was in a band and did all this crap in college. And, you know, yeah, I did want to be a painter, but I also wanted to be an actor and I wanted to be a musician and I wanted to be a stand-up comedian and all this crap. But I did want to be a painter and I did come down to L.A., uh, originally to be a painter and an actor. And I did want to follow all these things. I researched all that. I got all the art books, you know, how to make it in the art world, what to do, how to get into galleries and, you know, how to show your work, how to build your resume, how to establish a, you know, a collector base, all this stuff. I did all that. And you know what? It was fine. And I'm glad I did it. I learned a lot about the art world and I did a lot of shows. But what I found over time was that you know, it wasn't really taking off for me in the way that I thought it was going to, you know, I was making sales, like I was grateful for it. I was making sales here and there in galleries and by word of mouth and people coming into uh, my studio and friends and commissions here and there. But I was definitely not at the point where I was like, all right, <laughs> you're going to quit the day job and uh, launch into this. Or I wasn't at the place where the Betty Parsons gallery was going to pick me up and, you know, take me under their wing and put me out there to all of the high-end clientele and, you know, get into Life magazine. And if you get this reference, you'll know what I'm talking about. But that's not what happened with me. And that's fine. You know, it was good. It was like I had to stumble. I had to fall. I had to find my own way. It took me a while. But what I'm saying is we can take these preconceived notions, the preconceptions of how we're supposed to go and the path we're supposed to go on and all the art books we've read, because sometimes they, they give you a little bit of anxiety, like, oh, I'm not doing, I'm not doing what I should be doing. And I need to follow this path. And sometimes they can be a distraction. I do think it's important to get out there and to see what works for you and to have trial and error and to get into shows and stuff like that, just to, to get a feel for what the art world's about. But I also think that your end goal is to get your artwork out there in the public eye and to really showcase your work and to sell it and, you know, maybe even to become famous. Well, there's a lot of paths to do that. And I think a lot of people, just like in the tech world and, you know, in the entrepreneurial world, it's like the people who always make a name for themselves, it's like they took their own path, you know, they forged their own path, they did different things, they they threw away the manual. You know, a lot of those people dropped out of college and didn't even get a college degree and they ended up forming billion-dollar companies. Uh, I'm not saying that you need to drop out of college or do any of that. What I'm saying, though, is don't be so tied into what you think you should be doing. Take that, take it as like a blueprint, and then find wiggle room within that to like kind of go, I want to explore this and I want to do this. And now with the internet, we have so many different ways to get our work out there. And as you know, my career kind of opened up when I started to take more of the power back and I started to get my stuff online more. And, you know, ironically, I sold more in galleries when I was doing that too. But, you know, it was just because I kind of forged my own path and I found a collector base and I got my work out there in a unique way that I had control over. And that started to gain momentum and I started to make sales. And then when I started to make sales, other people started to notice and all those other pieces kind of fell into place. Now, I'm still doing it. I'm not, it's not like I'm retired. I'm still you know, having an art career and I'm still building that art career and I'm still, you know, trying to get bigger and bigger and better and better and, you know, bigger, faster, stronger and all that. As everybody listening to this is, it doesn't matter what part of your career you're in, you're always trying to get better and advance and make gains. So that's great. But do you have to just, you know, go through the gallery system and do this show and do that show that other people have done and get in this gallery and have this rite of passage? I, I don't think so. I, I remember when Clubhouse was a big deal uh, back in the day. I mean, I know it's still out there, but I haven't been on Clubhouse in, in ages. But I remember during COVID, Clubhouse was a big thing. And we did some rooms and, and I did some stuff with Alejandro Castagnon and He's an old interview that I did here, if you want to check that out. But we led some rooms and stuff, and we'd have people coming on there, and they'd be like, galleries are dead. This was at the onset of NFTs, and everybody was really excited. They were like, galleries are dead. You don't need to show in galleries anymore. And look, I think that's extreme. I don't think that's necessarily true, that you don't need to show in galleries ever, or galleries are dead. Galleries are dead. Long live the gallery. Uh, I, I don't think that's true either. I think all of these extreme point of views are wrong. But what I'm saying is, yeah, you can find your own way if you don't want to be in galleries. Like, for example, I've done so many gallery shows. I've been in hundreds of them. But I also, this last year, I think I've only been in like one, one or two, maybe through Shockbox. Now, I've done other behind the scenes stuff working with Shockbox and facilitated a lot of shows that way. But as far as just showing my work, 
I, you know, yeah, and I've had the chronic pain situation, all these other things going on, and I, it's been one of those things where I've made a decision, a conscious decision to not show my work as much, but I haven't shown my work as much in galleries, and, you know, my sales are still working out. Like, I'm still getting my work out there in certain ways. I'm still getting opportunities to do other things. Um, I still have avenues to get my work out there. It's like in the Basquiat movie, the art critic, Rene, I can't remember his last name right now, but um, he wrote... It's the artist's job to get their work in the public eye. And I think that is very broad. That doesn't mean get it in a gallery, do these art fairs, keep building your resume, get into this one, have an art dealer that takes you on or a manager or somebody who's going to facilitate your art sales, give them a percentage, and then you're off to the races. You're off to the races, kid. Ah, Let me show you something. I don't think that that is 100% true anymore. I don't think that is the only way. And and thank God it's not. Thank God we have more options out there. Thank God we can kind of take some of the control back. Like you can do what somebody like Brent Esterbrook did. Like you can listen to that episode where I interview him. He kind of took control and, and started his own gallery. He has his own gallery studio space and he has his own friends list and art list. And yeah, he does still show in like museums and galleries, but he has control of his career, just like I have kind of taken control of my career uh, and doing my own thing. So I think that's really exciting. I think that is uh, very empowering that we have that ability to do that. So how do you get started with this? Well, if you're listening to this podcast, you've probably already gotten started on this. You're probably already trying to figure out your path and do some trial and error and stuff like that. So I would recommend, yes, do the galleries, read the books if you want to, listen to the podcast, but also get out there, listen to some other stuff, like listen to some podcasts that are not in the art realm only. Like I listen to a lot of different stuff. I live at, listen to doctors and science podcasts and entrepreneurial podcasts like the Tim Ferriss podcast. And I listen to motivational stuff and, you know, audiobooks. And those give me some different energy and they give me some different ideas to approach my business in a different way. It's like, well, look, this works in this field. Why couldn't this work in the art field? That's a good place to get started, to just expand your horizons a little bit and to go, how can I think outside the box and do something different and not just follow the path that everybody else follows getting into the art world? And I know that's a broad generalization, but it's true. A lot of people do feel like they have this one path to go through. So I'm here to tell you, you don't. I am an example of that. People like Brent Esterbrook are an example of that. Um, There's a lot of people that are examples of that. Paul Rustan, a lot of people that I've interviewed here, a lot of people in the art world. And There's so many different ways now to take control of your career. So this is just me throwing it out there. How can you find a way to cut your teeth in the art world, try some of these things, but also forge your own path and forge your own unique path and find different and unique ways to get your art out there into the public eye? I will leave that up to you for now to think about, and I will be bringing you many more episodes and many more ideas that can maybe help you forge that path. But in the meantime... It's got to come from you. The spark has got to come from you. And that's when it's the most empowering, really, is when something lights a fire under your ass and then you go, ah, I'm going to go back to the lab and I'm going to start thinking about this and brainstorming and, and listening to some other stuff and getting some new ideas. That is always very exciting. And of course, always you got to do the work. You got to be creating artwork and getting a body of work. But if you have that, if you are creating and you're trying to get your art out there, then now's the time to think of some unique ways to get it out into an area that maybe other people aren't thinking about or in a way that people aren't thinking about. So that's it for today, everybody. Hopefully this has been inspiring and I will catch you on the next episode. We're going to have some interviews coming up. I have been still convalescing and getting better in certain ways. So I haven't really been doing a lot of interviews uh, at the moment, but I will be bringing some more back soon. And in the meantime, hopefully you're getting some motivation out of these little mini episodes. Take care. Be good to yourself. Be good to everybody else out there. Stay creative and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, good. You're back. Let me show you something. Let's say you work in your studio and you got the blowtorch and you got the... (laughs) Different time? Ah, oh, you're walking away. Oh, you know what you're doing. Oh, God! Be safe out there, kids. This has been the Living Artist Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. I just want you to know that I appreciate you being here, and I'm grateful to be in your ears. 
Your art and creative life on this planet is meaningful, so thank you for sharing it with me. If you like this podcast, whatever platform you're listening to it on, please subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also leave me a positive review to show your support. This helps me to reach more people with the algorithmic magic and keep the show going strong. If you want to see more of what I do and check out the art that I create, you can visit my website at www.pmsartwork.com or follow me on social media everywhere at PMS Artwork. That's it for now. See you back here next time.